You know, when you get to the fifth NASCAR, it better be dang good. Because you got to go through four to get to them. Welcome to the greatest show on the internet in the history of the web. And also, it goes without saying, the greatest show on the Cincinnati Reds. It's the fifth mascot with Mike Cannon and Mr. Satin. I'm Ken Brew. Joey Votto, comeback player of the year. I'm calling for it right now. Joey Votto's numbers are such that I think if you look at that, it's hard pressed to see anybody that could be considered for comeback player of the year not named Votto. Your thoughts, Mike? I agree. I think the only thing that maybe holds him back is that he didn't have, like, an atrocious year last year. He just right. wasn't yeah. great. Who asked you? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just helping back here. I'm oh, just okay. here to help. Okay. okay. But, yeah, I don't Mike think... Mike was I mean, trying to talk here. I just ah, said, yeah. Good. I was being enthusiastically supportive. Mike, Mike continue. I, yeah, please. I, I think, <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I think if he wasn't on such an awful team, we'd be talking about Joey Votto for MVP with the numbers he's put up. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's been unbelievable. And if... if his stats in the second half of the season were, were carrying this team to the playoffs. You'd have people talking about him as, uh, as a possible MVP candidate. As, well, as it is, he'll be lucky to crack the top ten, I think. I'd say, is there any way he could sneak in there? And get, I mean, he might steal some votes with that. He could. I, he's I, not going to win it. Right. Well, he, if, he, if he had more RBIs, his, his numbers are great for on base. He'll probably get 30 home runs, but he's not, he might not even get 80, 80 RBIs. And that's, some of his numbers aren't, you know, Triple, triple crown kind of numbers, and uh, I think that plus the fact that they're not very good. Is that his underwear coming out of his? That's that's Libby's Ooh, uh, like Superman that. cape. Oh, okay. I like that. <laughs> you don't tug Wasn't on sure. Superman's cape. That's it's either a cape is. or a parachute, depending on the day. <laughs> I think for the yeah. Reds, the winds and it's the wind and Wrigley. It's a parachute. But, but yeah. look, at those yeah. numbers are just unbelievable. They, they yeah. really are, that particularly crazy. since the All Star break. I mean, they, you look at anyone can get hot over seven days. Five hundred batting average over seven days is still. Pretty That's darn impressive, sick. but 399 since the All Star break. We were just talking about Ted Williams's uh, frozen DNA in Arizona. <laughs> Did they uh, insert some of that, inject it into Vado here? Yeah, they yeah. said they said that he that, that I heard on ESPN that this is uh, he's on pace to have the best half season ever, except for Barry Bonds and Ted Williams. I think it was the year that Ted Williams hit 400 or and. He obviously batted well the second half, and he stayed over 400 at the end. But there's only two half seasons, if he keeps on this pace, that would be better in the history of Major League Baseball. Well, you have to say MVP. For on base, I mean, for you on have to throw him in the conversation, for on base percentage. Right? That's for on-base percentage. Yeah, but I, I think the MVP conversation is where would his team have finished without him? Right. So right. It yeah. might have been double A. You know? I mean, what are we, 200 games back now? We might be 400 yeah. games I mean, without him. So. In, in British that. soccer, they call that relegated. Think really. about that. I mean, <laughs> we were when we were talking last week when we had John Arardi on here, he was talking about some of the worst Reds teams in, yeah. in team history. And you look at that and you think, well, there really wasn't anyone good on those teams. I mean, there are good players on this team. And the, for Votto to have the kind of season he's having right now and this team to be as bad as it is right now is kind of hard to get your head around. Like, how does that even happen? And, and, and you know, everybody caps on Votto for not being the emotional leader. But I think if, you, if you're someone who is into leading by example, there's yep. the example right And now. he works hard and he's there and he... I mean, he's not doing anything wrong. It's not like he's, it's not like he's causing problems in the clubhouse. Well, yeah. he did have that, you know, he came out with that statement, and that was good to hear from him where he was, he was pissed off, you know, and yeah. he was embarrassed and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's good to hear. It's just not good to hear once a year. What's the statement? Know? What statement is that? This one right here. We, yeah. Libby's, Libby's on fire this week. She is just, <laughs> yeah. we can't, wow. We can't play it for you because we don't have the rights to do that. But he's, he was in a, it was a post-game interview with, uh, I believe, Jim Day, and, and after he hit the home run in Milwaukee in the ninth inning ninth inning and he said the fans of Cincinnati need to know that this is embarrassing for us it's been really frustrating we, we take no pride in this we take it very seriously I know that it bothers me and I hope that every single time we have a game like this this is us moving in the direction of a winning atmosphere that was the game they won yeah. in Milwaukee we're not doing it right now and the people of Cincinnati especially the fans need to know that we're doing everything that we can to make that right it was a little vanilla white bread but yeah. That's him, you know, being emotional at the right. end of the game. That, and that's a lot for him, honestly, yeah. because they're, they're no good because they've been dumping salaries since last season. So mm -hmm. it, that's why they're no good. But uh, it's good to hear him say that. And uh, everybody thinks, well, you make a lot of money. You're making $25 million a year. 
you know, that should satisfy you. But it's like anything else. If you're paid a lot of money to do anything and you don't enjoy your job for whatever reason, money isn't going to soothe all wounds. You still have to oh, show yeah. up to make money. You know, you've got to still have to show up to work to make money. It's not like you can just sail away to the Caribbean or the Caribbean. I would like that, though. I would like that, too. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you just look at some of the numbers he's put up. He's reached base 117 times since the All-Star break. There are some guys who don't reach base 117 times in a season. Oh, I mean, we have on this team. Crazy. They're on this team right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they, it said that he's reached base 117 times. That's 30 since the break. And that's 31 more times than anybody else in the major leagues. Oh, my goodness. That's ridiculous. Unreal. It's like 200 at bats he's done that, too. <laughs> yeah. Those are MVP kind of numbers. I mean, it, it's. It's crazy. I mean, I, I can't even, like, he is putting up numbers, like season-long numbers, and he didn't have a great first half. He had a solid first half. He's putting up numbers just as bit as good as his 2010 MVP season. But can we say that he's an elite ball player? I think we can definitely yeah. say yeah. he's an elite ball player. He's one of the top 75 players in the game if you consider 10% of the ball players in the league elite. And I think, I've, I've said it all year on many, many platforms, I think he's one of the top 10 players in the league. I think he's one of the top mm -hmm. 10 players in the league, too, as long as he's healthy. Right. And, I th and I think the injuries that he had are injuries that take a while to come back from. You get a knee, uh, I think that that's where your power, your base of your swing comes from, your knee and your legs. And if, he's, if you're not right there to have the power and the drive, that's why the last couple of years I think he's been able to hit but not hit for the same level of power. Right. <clears throat> I just like when he plays, you can tell everything he does, he's breaking it down to you know the minutia of everything he's not getting caught up you know you see somebody who's like some of the left-handers like uh, Jay Bruce or when Paul O'Neill used to be here and they just get emotional and they're banging their bat on the ground he something happens a pitch goes over the plate and it gets called he looks back he talks to the umpire he thinks about it he's always breaking it down and that's somebody that you can count on I think most of the time because they're not riding emotion they're they're thinking about it and they're moving forward and right. always you know figuring out what i can do on the next pitch better than i did on the last pitch so, and it so just let me seems ask like you guys this um with the way vado has played in the second half have you heard less uh belly aching about vado and and uh, he's not the guy, and why they put so much money, you know, all that, all, and yeah. that he's sure. not driving in runs. Have you heard that kind of stuff about Vada, or has that gone away because he's back to the Joey Vada of 2012? Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of it is maybe people have just given up on the team and yeah. they've moved on yeah. to other things to complain about, like taxes <laughs> and you know, Ooh, yeah, or other things with the team to complain about, right. like the you know the fact that you but, know, they've but, got a price. But, yeah. but you make a great mm -hmm. point, Mike. It's yeah, they're, they're, they ought to be complaining about. Why isn't what Votto does in his plate approach rubbing off on Jay Bruce? Why is it not rubbing off on some of the other guys that are in this lineup or who are here and maybe some players that are injured and not here? Why doesn't it rub off on them to be more like Joey Votto? Right. You well, see his leadership, too, and, and it should. One thing, one thing, too, I love what I'm seeing out of Votto right now is he's having fun. You're seeing him laughing. You're seeing him on the field actually carrying conversations and laughing and you're seeing some high fives and I think the other night I was watching and he's singing along to some walk-up song I'm like I, do I know this Vado what's going on here so I mean that's nice and yeah why is you know BP's having fun you're seeing him smile a little bit more he's yeah. challenging things but these young kids you know maybe they need to see that to start loosening up a little like bit Billy you know? Hamilton. Billy Hamilton needs to adopt Votto's discipline at the plate. Yeah. If he does that, he'll walk more or get on base more. Well, I think you go back to one of the things with Votto is, um, you know, the, the numbers he's putting up, especially the numbers of times he's been walked, is also a fact that no one around him is hitting. So, I mean, he's getting on base at an insane rate, partially because... A lot of guys just aren't pitching to him. I mean, they're just he's like, just like three walking. or four times a game. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, like but he doesn't since, have to. Since the break, his average is 400, though. So that's still, I mean, yeah. you're right. The, everything combined is insane. Right. But the, right. the average alone, even if, you know, he's getting enough pitches that he's at least getting base hits and he's hitting some home runs. I mean, it's what he's doing now is, is good across the board. He just needs more people on base when he gets those hits. So I saw some data. It was This was about a week ago. But it was that since the All-Star break, Votto was swinging at fewer pitches than he ever had and his batting average on the pitches that he swung at was higher than it normally is. Wow. That's so awesome. he's being so much more selective and when he actually swings <clears throat> the bat 
he's hitting it at a higher rate than he normally does. They're getting base hits at a higher rate. He's got rate. that Ted Williams eagle eye, man, right yeah. now. Speaking he's, of Ted, we mentioned Ted several times. Is there some sort of news on his frozen head? Is yeah, that, uh, no? there was news about that. Like, it's been broken 10 times or something? What's, what's the deal with his that? His head? Well, yeah, it's no. been cracked open or something uh, like that. No, we, just, we were just talking, since I had Ted Williams in the rundown, uh, we were, I was talking to Libby, and I said, you know, yeah, he's got the frozen head or whatever, and she didn't know, you know, what I was talking about, and so we were just discussing it. You but know. there's various parts of his body that are that, that's frozen, right. right? Yeah. So I mean, they've frozen his head, and but they they've severed the body, and his legs are frozen. The operation <laughs> we're, we're looking on the internet. The operation was completed, and William's head and body were preserved separately. The head is stored in a steel can filled with liquid nitrogen. It has been shaved. Drilled with holes and accidentally cracked ten times. Wow! <laughs> this, is from this, is, this is not this is not nine on your side exclusive. We're <laughs> well, but, 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 but why? But what's the point here? I don't understand why don't know they can't I, keep I, Ted together. Like what? I, I don't know. <laughs> is the, does, is, does somebody want his legs and they want to, like when he when you can all magically do this in the year twenty five twenty five? Well, yeah. I'm pretty sure they fired nine interns, you know, on the 10th <laughs> one, what happens on that break? Wow. So anyway, um, so he's frozen. Would you ever want to be frozen, Mike? No. I, I think I'd like to be. Although if I'm dead, I don't know if I really care that much. Right. So. I want people to be able to come see me, you know, like, uh, you know, I don't know. Can you, so you can want they, to be frozen in carbonate? I yeah, do. I want people solo. to. I, I, yeah, I want to be like, you know, yeah, where they blind, can still blind. blind you're see. blind when you come out of that. Just remember. Yeah. And I want to record something so they can ask. Blind afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I want to record something so when they come by, I'm like greeting them as they come by. I just think that'd like be wonderful. That. I like that. Like maybe a little nice old guitar lick. I'm thinking maybe like someplace that. down at Over the Rhine, one of those shops, like by those restaurants. Yeah. You're down, yeah. You're downtown <laughs> on a Saturday night. You want something to do? You come by and hit see the me. button. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, Gatlinburg or something. You hit like the magic button and it'll be like waves at thinking. you and smiles. That's what I'm thinking. We'll, 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 we'll call it Bruce Bistro. That's right. Yeah. You can get the so, personal welcome from Kendrew Weekend of Bernie's. Forever. <laughs> I would, I would weekend of Bernie's. the jungle place. I want to be frozen and, and thawed out and ready, ready to go uh, next time the Reds are a contender. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. might need to be frozen for that. We'll see, yeah. we'll see, we'll see in, in 20 years. But, uh, but no, I, I didn't know whether. Actually, I might be able to live that long. So. I want to be next to you down there. That's Nobody right. Ryan with the little. Okay. Like a little walk-up music or something like that? Well, you got to put a quarter like in for me to do anything. Oh, yeah. All the right, the right. next time the Reds are contenders, this guy is going to be uh, our, our ace. I was going to say that that guy is going to be the starting pitcher on opening day, and he proves it every single time he goes out there. And I, I will say this. I think that if they could figure out a way, because it's obvious the owner doesn't want to trade the dude, if they could figure out a way to make Chapman a starter, just think about Chapman, Iglesias, Di Sclafani, Bailey when he's healthy, and then you got your pick of whoever you want to be that fifth starter. It could yeah. be Moscot, it could be Lamb, uh, uh, Lamb it could be Robinson, whoever. Yeah. Finnegan, I mean, and you also have parts that you can trade to try to get someone who can play left field better than uh, mm -hmm. And if he comes Brian back, Bosch. that might save Brian Price's butt. Rysel's had 10 or more strikeouts in his last three outings. That's a Reds rookie uh, That's record. That's the, the last time the Reds, Reds rookie pitcher did that was 1900. Right. The and last that, time it was what? done in the, the last time the last time the last time a, a major leaguer did it was 20 years ago Hideo Nomo uh, had four straight games with 10 strikeouts when he was right. uh, and I, yeah. s I saw that he's stat. He's dominant when he's in there. He's dominant. I mm -hmm. saw that stat about since 1900, and that feels like that's one of those, like, well, we just don't have records that go back far enough. To, <laughs> because because Chicken he, Wolf. They, they called Bid McPhee to see what he had to say. I mean, because, like, pre-1900 guys didn't strike out. I mean, no, never. They, they, that was, like, you were embarrassment if you ever right. struck out. Yeah. So back in Imagine the day, Jay yeah. Bruce in 1900. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, he, would, he probably wouldn't even be a player. Right. You, know? no, they, like, you, could three, you could hit 300. If you hit 300 and struck out 100 times, which people do all the time now, they wouldn't leave you on the ball club because they thought it was an embarrassment that you couldn't make Yeah, so I, I can't imagine that any rookie pitcher before 1900 struck out 10 guys in three straight games no. there's just no way no. so but I just think I just think this this guy's found money and that you know what we talk about how long it's going to be before the Reds contend again their salvation may be is to go international and just find guys well, rather than try and draft and wait for them well and, and we you know we've 
talk a lot about Walt Jockety and is he the right guy, but you look at a move like Iglesias, you yeah. look at a move like Chapman, I mean, Jockety has hit pretty well. His batting average is pretty solid on those types of moves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at the trade that, uh, you know, we, I think the jury is definitely still a little bit out, but you look at the <coughs> trade of Latos for uh, Di Sclafani, I mean, Oh, yeah. That trade looks brilliant now. So Lato, Simon, Latos so is Simon, awful. Simon, so does the trade for Simon. Is, yeah. I mean, the, both those trades look genius right now. Uh, I mean, it's still a long way to go. His, but yeah, and his numbers just show that when he's in the game, in the last three games, he's got six earned runs and four home runs. They only have 10 hits in 21 innings and 23 strikeouts. He's just had a couple of balls get you know, let, 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 he lets get by him, but right. uh, most of the time he's. He's handling these major league batters very uh, comfortably. And he's got that El Duque kick. Yeah. 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 He's got like four or five pitches. Catch, I think. Catch yeah. runners, too. Yeah, Do you see them around yeah. the bases? He does I mean, things, he does things off his delivery that you yeah. know, he'll have, a, uh, he'll have a, 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 like a cutter up here, then have another cutter down here. He'll have, a, he'll have a curve from up here, and then he'll have a three-quarter curve. He, there's a lot of things he does that's just really kind of cool. That's really surprising for a guy as young as he is. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bronson Arroyo used to do that kind of stuff all the time, but Bronson Arroyo didn't have a 95-mile-per-hour fastball, no. and he didn't do that at age, what, what's uh, Iglesias, 24, something like that. I mean... Rachel or <laughs> Julio? <laughs> Julio? How old Julio? He's getting up there. Yeah. Singer? Yes, the singer. The singer, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You teasing. know, you know, have you ever heard him sing? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, good. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. But the, the guy who came up to replace Mike's boy, Brennan Bosch, Adam oh, Duvall. Gosh. Adam Duvall. Yeah. Yeah, he had, he had the debut of debuts, and he's apparently pretty good at having debuts. He had a home run in his first at bat as a Red. He also had a home run in his first major league game against Mike Leake. He had, his fir he had a home run in his first game as a Louisville bat. And he had a home run in the first game of this season for the Sacramento River Cats. So the key with this guy is just play him one game. <laughs> yeah. And then sit him down for a month. But Magical. Yeah. But Brandon yeah. who? <laughs> I'm kidding. So, so that'll be like the next guy everybody falls in love with, like Brendan Bosch, until he comes up here and hits 126? I'm yeah. the only guy who loves Brendan Bosch. <laughs> what about so, uh, what, Bourgeois now? He's, he's looking all... All right, man. You got these young Bur guys. Bourgeois looks you know? a heck of a lot better yeah. than Billy Hamilton. Hamilton. That, and, that's, and that's wild right there. Well, yeah. I'll, I have this theory, and I don't know if it makes sense or not, but I just think when you got a team that's as far out of it as the Reds are, and you get to this time of the year, when you're not thinking about it, there's no pressure or anything, a lot of these stats don't matter. Because what are you doing when the heat's on and when games matter? And Jason Bourgeois might be that 126 hitter in April and May when oh, yeah. the heat's on. Well, you know, going back to Duvall, the thing that really kind of just makes me wonder where this team is heading is I heard Brian Price on the radio the day that they brought Duvall up, so before he hit the homer to win the game. Uh, and he was talking about, well, you know, Duvall played a lot. You know, he's primarily a corner infielder, and obviously he's blocked there with Votto and Frazier. So, you know, he's play, he played a lot of left field down at AAA, and, you know, he, he looked okay there. So, um he, he might get some bat, uh, bats off the bench, and you know maybe maybe he'll get a spot start or so out in left field or spell Votto or Frazier. And I'm like, you, the team went out and traded for this guy. With it, it's not like all of a sudden Votto or Frazier popped up out of nowhere. You right, knew yeah. you had Votto and Frazier. This you went out and traded for this guy. Against Mike Leake last year in his first at bat. If, if yeah. the plan isn't to play him in left field now, when is when the is plan? When is it? I agree 100 yeah. percent. You know what? And you can play him in right field right now. I mean, you could play him in right field right now and just forget about Jay Bruce. But I'll, I'll, you're absolutely right. You, who do you want to see out there? That guy or Skip Schumacher? I mean, it, it's it's absurd to think <laughs> that you've got this guy who is like I think when they traded for him, he led the minor leagues in home runs, and he's like third in the minor leagues in home runs. I think now, he's a power bat. He's a righty. Yes, he is not a natural left fielder, and yes, it's hard to switch someone to left field in the middle of the season. But he has played left field field before. It's not like he'd never played left field yeah. before, like what they were trying to do with Mazzarocco. Right. I mean. Your team's 22 games over 500. There is, there's no point in not trying it and give him the rest of the season to prove he can hit and prove he can play left field. And if he can't do it, nothing is lost. I mean, it's right. not like you're I agree. 
do it now. Don't do it in the minors. Throw, throw them at the Wolves now. Right. Like you said, there's no pressure right now. And it's nice going into spring training to know if you got a guy or if you don't. You know, and, and, and you may not even have a true test of that, but you can at least have an idea. And what, what it sounded like to me from just listening to Brian Price's comments was either there's a pretty severe disconnect between Jockety, yeah. who acquired the guy, and Price, who runs the day-to-day -day operations on the field. That's no doubt. Or... You think, or 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 combination <laughs> of maybe it's an and. Price is like, for some reason, has it in his head if they don't if they lose a hundred games or something like that that he's done. He, and he, and somehow by winning a few more games, which I don't see how that's going to happen, he's going to hold on to his job. I don't think I at this point I don't think what they do, unless they are miserable over the, the last month of the season, really matters. No, I agree. And they ought to have Stevenson up here in the rotation. And I'll tell you what, this may sound stupid, but I've made stupid statements before, amazingly. Jesse Winker belongs up here. Bring him up. I would rather see that dude up here playing any position than seeing Scott Sh uh, Skip Schumacher play any position. I, you, you don't like Skip Schumacher. I don't. I mean, why is he? Why is he still on the team? Actually, we have Sh think about Schumacher this. right now on the line. No, he let, wanted to talk. But, 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 but think about this. It's nothing against the dude, but you have all these teams in contention, and you don't trade this guy. I don't think anybody would take him. Well, that's my no. point. What's he doing right, out there? Right, right. You know, and, and even uh, your boy, uh, Bourgeois, I don't need to see him. <laughs> he, well, this team Come gets on. good. He's not going to, he'll have to buy a ticket to he, get it. He's not on the game. team next year? He's not on the team next week, <laughs> if they're any good. That, that's hey, the thing. Hey. I think those guys are on this team because there's nobody else. There is absolutely nobody else. Well, and, you know, Price is not pulling the trigger. Like you said, go for it or, or go home, man. I mean, there's other guys that will pull the trigger. Who cares and if, at, I mean, can Adam Duvall be worse in left field than Adam Dunn? I don't see any way. Defensively? Yeah, defensively. I mean, he may not hit 40 home runs and walk 100 <coughs> times like Adam Dunn, but, I mean, he's not. You'd be he's, hard pressed. He what's he going to do, cost you a couple games with his defense in left field? Okay. <laughs> Mo moving on Mike, to, you've totally given up. It's mo like, moving on I, I'm to, fired up about this. <laughs> I, I can tell. This is the most animated I've seen him since the show began. Yeah, yeah, right. He's getting, he's getting emotional. Calm Cost down, Mike. Cost some games. We, whatever, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> this, this week in Reds history, which really isn't a Reds, other than sort of the six degrees of Reds kind of uh, week in Reds history, uh, September 31st, 1990, for the first time in Major League history, Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. became the first father and son to play in the same Major League lineup. The 40-year-old left fielder and his 20-year-old offspring both score a run in the Mariners' 5-2 victory over the Royals at the Kingdom. It's like you're tucking me in for bed the way you're reading this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you got to kiss me goodnight after this, Matt? No, no. I'm too far away, and, okay. I'm, glad, and I'm glad about that. Okay, good. Yeah. But no, the, the boat, obviously Ken Sr. a long time before was a Red. He was helping with, uh, he came back and was affiliated with the Reds when his son came. But uh, that was a big moment in a whole lot of people's uh, yeah. Major League uh, history. Didn't they homer like in the same game too? I think they did yeah. later. Yeah, yeah, not in that game, but yes, not they did. They've had, they have several records that will probably never be even, I don't even know if there's going to be two guys in the majors at the same time again. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't well, even I mean, know. not too many guys play till they're 40 anymore, right. first of all. <clears throat> and, well, and plus, he came, he's in the majors when he's 20. That's really yeah. the harder part. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you're you know, right. Some, yeah, I mean, there's less guys who are ma in the majors when they're 20 than there, or, you know, than there are majors when they're 40, I think. Yeah, or it's about the same right kind of that. number. And he was like the yeah. best center fielder in the, what, Kingdom or whatever they played? <clears throat> yeah, the, they day day like the day he began his career with Seattle, he was yeah. the best center fielder. Yeah. Right. Together, yeah. they have like 700 homers, don't they, or 800? Yeah, I think the only father-son combo with more is uh, uh, the Barry bonds. and yeah. yeah, the Bonds probably have more. Yeah, they they absolutely. Uh, this isn't breaking. They absolutely revere Junior in Seattle. I mean, they do. They just, and I'm not. He's not felt that way here because of just what happened when they acquired him, what went on around him. But in Seattle, they just absolutely love him. They really do. Well, he was, you know. But he was the he was what br brought Seattle to being a competitive team. Right. You know, right. They were they were just you know flounder you know a team that never really had any thoughts of doing anything, and it yeah. even took a number of years while he was on them before they got to the playoffs. But yeah, I'm what, sure. what's the significance of this picture? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Griffin, uh, Libby is just showing a lot of different things. Yeah. I don't know that they, it was obviously when he came back here, 
It was photo day, yeah. They, they just had identifying marks on each other. Oh. You know, you know they, when, when the guys from Tops come over, they want to know who they're talking to. And so that, that's what <laughs> they like do. they were getting on an airplane or something. Yeah. Behind <laughs> there's, there's a senior after a donut or two, it looks like, right there. Oh. Have you seen Junior, <laughs> have you seen junior lately? Junior's yeah, put on some weight, too. Yeah, I know. That's true. Do you hey, think everybody he's... gets older, you know? <laughs> come on. Give when the he... big guys a break. Sorry, they're not get, 20 years hit, old right there. We're hitting a sensitive area. Okay. When they... He, he's the first, obviously, a first ballot Hall of Famer. He may be one of the top vote getters ever. One, and it's this coming, this coming January yeah, when they announce it. So. Do you do you think he acknowledges Cincinnati at all in his uh, his Hall of Fame speech? Do you think he, he acknowledges the? Uh, I mean, other than just the cursory thank you to, you know, whoever Barry Larkin or whatever. But do you think he even acknowledges that? Yeah, I think he will. I think his high school he probably will, and his dad and all that stuff. I, well, he had grown up with a big red bread. machine. I mean, all that, you know? I mean, I think he would. Yeah, I'll, yeah, it'll be interesting to talk, see how, how they... <clears throat> maybe might not talk much about his career in Cincinnati, but as far right. as it, growing up in Cincinnati, his dad being around baseball, Mueller, whatever. Yeah. I could yeah. see that. And it's a Mariner's cap, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. absolutely. I would, I would yeah. think so, yeah. I mean, his career here as a player was very inconsequential. No. I mean, he, he he was on pace, it would have appeared, to break the home run record before Barry Bonds did, and uh, it just fizzled out. It's kind of like Tiger Woods with uh, the majors, and, you know, I mean, it seemed like it was a lock when he yeah. came here. He had had so many, he had, you know, he had 400 almost right away, right. and then he spent another eight years here, and he, he couldn't, I think he had 40 home runs once. Well, yeah, but I remember, uh, what was it, his first year here, he blew, well, it wasn't his first year here, he blew his shoulder out, <coughs> I think, his second year here, and then he had the hamstring thing. Yeah, and well, the hamstring thing sort of never went away. Yeah. yeah. He stays a Mariner and goes to the DH position. He, he might have the record right now. I think there's a good chance of yeah. it. I mean, but but you got to think about like at the time when he came over, he was he was a Gold Glove center fielder. I yeah, mean, I was he say. was an absolute <laughs> five tool yeah. player who could do everything. I mean, he was Mike Trout. Yeah. What Mike Trout is right now, forty I mean, three defensive player. And yeah. for everybody that says, look at what the Cardinals did. They let Pujols walk, and they got stronger. The Reds kept Votto, and they didn't get stronger. The Mariners let him go, and I think they had one more year, and that was it. They disappeared. Yeah, after they that. were they were good. Like I think. I think they were getting maybe the next A-Rod, year. But then they get rid of A-Rod right around the same time. Or was yeah, so they started, they, they, you know, that's the opposite <laughs> of, of what yeah. happened in St. Louis with Pujols. But Pujols left as a free agent. Uh, the Griffey was a trade. And if you look at who the Reds gave up, I mean, he, as, as bad as it worked out for the Reds end, Griffey did not do what they wanted. Um, I mean, essentially the only person out of there that was a, was a quality major leaguer was Mike Cameron. Right. I mean, Brett Tomko never really did much. I don't remember who else was in that deal, but those are the only two guys that I think even really played much in the majors. So Not Ichiro. Not Ichiro. All right. Yeah, that's that's great. That's Have what we need right deal. now is Cameron. Somebody like that to play center. Have you heard about this guy, um, uh, a cartoon guy we got, this uh, Kevin Necessary? Yeah. yeah. You heard about this dude? Good stuff. That's so great. what is that? Is that Mr. Red flirting with Harry Lord? <laughs> He's so got those he bedroom the, eyes. Bedroom eyes. Yeah, am I right? Is that a fire got, in the bedroom? Yeah, that's it, baby. <laughs> you keep thinking about You got to those bed. bedroom eyes. You keep thinking about going to bed. I'm not sure what we got to keep you, keep him awake down there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, at my age, you think about going to bed a lot. <laughs> and only to sleep. Yeah. So, but uh, this, is, this, is, this is our caption that. contest. If you go to WCPO.com, you can look at any one of these that we have each week. <clears throat> and if you pick the, uh, you can write in a caption. I don't know if you call it a caption, but you write it in the thought balloon. And the one that gets the most likes on Facebook each week is and that the winner is announced on Saturday morning, Good Morning Tri-State. And, wow. and the winner gets two tickets to Riverbend and the glory of being the one that won. Will there be a concert going on when they go to Riverbend? Yes. Or? I believe there will be. I, I, I've got, <laughs> I've got my caption. I got my caption. Yes. Got my caption. Yes. Let's yeah. see your caption, Ken. So... Uh, Terry, <laughs> Covassier or Mon Marnet. I think that would be a good question. I think you're going to Riverbend. I, I, think, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be seduced by a baseball with a mustache because that's exactly what it looks well, like. Well, you know, there's that whole thing now yeah, where people are dressing up. I don't, I don't know. Oh, man, they're dressing up these characters. It's called Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> it's been around for a while. <laughs> 
No, they, 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 go the, they go to these big, huge... Uh, and they're not in the bedroom. How do you know okay. they're not in the bedroom? Well, okay, do you think they got, like, a fire extinguisher with the break the glass in the bedroom? I've, I've had it in mind. Okay, all right. <laughs> back in my 20s, first. there was a lot of that going on. <laughs> okay, back little in... little hammer <laughs> hanging off the side, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but here's the deal. I, we said this with the whole Arca thing popped last week, and I, uh, you weren't here last week. Were you I here was. last week? You know, in spirit? I know you were. Yeah. But when Arardi was here, he'd be an idiot to take that job right now. First of all, <laughs> the team's not going to be good for two years. And in two years, with, with more of this, ever, all the fans are going to be on Larkin. And why would you go to work for a general manager that has a year left on his contract? I wouldn't do that. Do you, well, what do you do? Do you wait till jockey has gone? Bring him, do you do bring him in and let him work in the front office for a year. Okay. All right. Let him learn the, let him learn the system. Let him learn the, what's inside the organization. And you can bring Price back because, I mean, who else? You know, let him eat. Manage that mess for another for another season. I think you bring it. You bring him uh, into the front office, which he already sort of. He's like a special assistant or whatever. Yeah. Or you say, go manage our AAA team because he's never managed a team other than the Brazil yeah, World Baseball Championship yeah. team for like th thirty days or something like that. I mean, if there is going to be a team to manage, though, that Brazil team. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it's like the that's dream the way. Team. Yeah. It's the dream team. Right, right. Put, that, put that cartoon back up again. I got another oh, caption. All right, put dude. that back up. Hold on, on, hold on. We got another thing for us. Uh -oh. Yeah, it, it better be good. With it's all a, this it, when do you hear this, cat? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. So, uh, if you're looking for a stitch to nibble on to really get me going, it's number one forty-one. <laughs> <laughs> This fire is too hot. <laughs> Stay away. I'm telling you, behind that behind that baseball head, I guarantee you there's satin sheets. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. I guarantee you. I hope so. Do you think Barry Larkin likes satin sheets? I, what do, do you I think? think? Oh, my God. What do you think his threat count is? This is getting I mean, worse. It's up there. It's not thousand. getting better. It's thousand, getting thousand, thousand thread a thousand count. thread count on satin sheets? Yeah, yeah I think you so. Can't get, you cannot get that in America. That's a guy that looks like he's got satin sheets. <laughs> yeah. He just looks smooth. He I does. I hope he is the next manager. I'd like to see that. Yeah, well, what he has players. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, if he's the next manager, he'll let you come. I mean, yeah, that. hey, you know what? I'll, you <laughs> you know don't what? understand we'll the, line up. The, the, the baseball me. with the mustache, <laughs> but I think you might be There's second. There's going to be a line out the door? <laughs> why? I mean, why not? I mean, hey, when do you drop him in, though? I mean, like, are we, are, are we going to wait around five, six years? Come on. Two years. Man. Work in the front office one year, go in there when they actually have a pulse. And then maybe in that third year, you got a team that can contend. Maybe. But if he takes that job now, I guarantee you, in two years, people will be screaming for him to go. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I want Walt Jockey to keep drafting for another two years, though. Well, that's the big question. Is he gonna get, are they going to keep him? And I think yeah. the only way Larkin should take that job is if Jockety goes. And that way you start fresh. you got your own front office in there. You know, it's not, not a cap on Jockety, but, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's unfair to him to have him come in and be saddled with past regime. My personal opinion. You think this shirt makes me look fat, by the way? No, no. Because it's like kind of like no. hanging Mr. over. Mr. Red like this. <clears throat> no, no, no. <laughs> I got a. It's couple more of like stitches. my face. Make no. We got. We're good. I don't know because I was just looking at this. I seem to be blousing off the side there, and I am not really putting on weight. That's the camera. Is that, is that a, a blouse? Bird? I don't know. Blousing is a term. You shop okay. in the men's department, right? <laughs> I do. Yes, I do. We saw the buttons on. And chill at those. Well, it's a battle for last place at the Great American. No, oh, we had to get. Oh, uh, take him down. <laughs> Yeah. That's uh, that's they, they, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They got they got a lot of they got two they have ten series left. Two of them are against the Brewers. Mm. The rest of them are against teams that are in the playoffs or a game or two out. Wow. They're going to have to do well to not be one of the worst teams record-wise in Reds history. Now, is is, is Kibi is Samson? Could you look at him and say he's a possibility in that rotation next year, or is he just like? <coughs> I think he's a possibility. I mean, we talk exactly. about a lot of these guys. I know no one ever puts him in the same conversation. He's had some good games. I I, I think all the guys it's who just maybe too crowded. I think all the guys who are pitching or who have been pitching in the rotation, you have to consider. The only guy that that I would say. I put a big caveat on his Holmberg because he doesn't throw very hard. He throws like 89, 90 yeah. miles an hour. I just I don't think he's a major league starting pitcher, but the rest of the guys, I, th I think could be okay. I mean, Lamb's only three or four starts into his major league career. St Samson's only three or four, and those guys have good stuff. I mean, I was watching Lamb pitch, yeah. 
and he he was mixing it up, throwing his his curveball looked tough. Yeah, he should have a couple wins, you know. Yeah, because they kind of didn't really play well in the games. He he had a bad start his first yeah. start, but that was his major league debut, and then since then he hasn't pitched that bad. It's because they're putting Jay Bruce in the in the second hole. That's why they're not. Don't get me started. You see that? All right. All right. You know why I like Lamb? Because he's that look he's got. It's like, it's like that <laughs> I knew 70s. You were say that. He does. Oh, he's yeah. got a, he looks like he ought to be playing in the band America I or love something it. in the sixties <laughs> or Ario Speedway. Yeah, I mean know. he's got that seventies look. Yeah, he's, he's got a Trans Am, like nice tattoos. Oh my, he does. Yeah. He's got the kind of grit thing going. He's right. ready, he's ready to go. You know, hang out to some high schools and and. You know, <laughs> well, but, <laughs> I don't know about that. Days and confused. Uh, you know, you know, remember the old movie? Yeah, yeah. Like he could be Spicoli's roommate. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. I'm sure he's bringing the pizza. The girls keep. Young, exactly. Stay the same age. Yeah. You know, he's he's hanging out there. He's got the soul pole, whatever. You know, he's hanging out, man. He's <laughs> your days confused. Classic. I'm with you, Mike. You, you got me, right? Yeah, the soul pole. Yeah, I do. The California right. guy. All right, man. <laughs> but I like the look. The look's good, man. Yeah, he, he didn't care. He no, does a that. different look. That's yeah. Marge sure. shot. He wouldn't be playing for this team if Marge shot was there. I don't think. No, no have neither would you though. Yeah. He got a beer. Hey, and how uh, how bad is, how bad must Dylan Axelrod feel? This team's horrible, and he can't. Even stay on the forty-man roster. Man, he's Dylan Axelrod. So. Oh. He, he can't stay on the team that Skip Schumacher's on. Yeah, I yeah. like Skip Schumacher. <laughs> At least Lacure's back up. I mean, he's looking all right. He's actually pitched pretty well. Him and Hoover. I, they, you know, what if we started the Hoover. season yesterday, we'd be all right. We'd be one and zero. Well, yeah, there he's got go. seven wins. There How many games go. has he blown the okay. lead and then gotten the win? We just, yeah, if we, if we, we should do it like DraftKings, where every few days we start a new season. I love it. I love it. Let's go for it. Why not? Let's go for it. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a route out of this thing. Well, <laughs> uh, so be it. We're back. Are we back next week? Yes, we are. Good. Sure. Unless something happens that we don't know about at the management level, we're all back next week. This show is available for downloading on WCPO.com 24 7. So if you want to see past episodes when the team was good, Go back to like the first week in April. Yeah. If you want to see how no, five and zero, baby. Like, yeah. If you want to see how this thing has degenerated over time, you know, tune in, you know, download a show from like June. But uh, it's available twenty four seven on WCPO.com and live streamed every Thursday at one thirty and only on WCPO.com. Yeah. Yeah, this weekend, the whole season. Done. Right. <laughs> Do a shot of tequila every time I say they need to, they need to trade a this Chapman. Then we'll see you in like 2031. Or frozen in car.